Good day guys, uh, thanks for joining us another walkabout. Finally back out in the beautiful Australian bush. It's been way too long since my last camping trip, almost two months ago. Um, obviously the bushfires have sort of put a lot of camping on hold for the last couple of months, but um, yeah, we've had a fair bit of rain over the last week and yeah, I managed to put a lot of the fires out and I finally found a yeah, patch of the bush um, in this state that has been burnt. So yeah, I managed to get out here for a quick little overnighter tonight. Um, it's a pretty nice spot here. I've uh, got a nice little water hole behind me with a big cliff face and it is pretty clear I should be able to find a spot to string up a hammock between the trees um, but I only just got here so I might go for a bit of a wander around and see what I can find around the area and see if I can uh, yeah, find a good place to set up camp so it should be a nice weekend so stick around man this is a very beautiful spot cannot complain about this so good to see the rivers and creeks flowing again. Uh, like I said, I think in the last week we had about two or three months worth of rain, all in a matter of a couple of days. Um, so many places got flooded. So it's pretty crazy to go from um, yeah, fires to floods, but that's Australia for you. But yeah, last year was one of the hottest and driest years on record, so we really needed this rain. And um, yeah, it's good to see that the rivers are yeah, finally flowing again. So this could be a pretty cool spot to set up camp. So you've got a nice little sandy beach and a uh, sort of rock wall behind you. And right out in front of you, nice view of the creek. Yeah, so this um, could be a pretty cool spot to set up camp. So what I bought um, in terms of sleeping arrangements, I bought my hammock, uh, my tarp, and I bought my inflatable mat because I just quite, wasn't quite sure the kind of terrain that I'd be sort of um, yeah camping among. So kind of covered all bases, but I was I was kind of hoping to probably use the hammock this time, um, just because I slept on my mat heaps of times this year. I haven't really used a hammock much so I could easily set up the map behind me on this um, little sandy beach but I might still go for a bit more of a wander around and see if I can find a nice um, some nice trees to string up the hammock because I think I probably would prefer to sleep in the hammock tonight. Yeah, so here's not a bad spot either. It's quite clear down the bottom here and I could run the ridge line from this and Gofra Costata or Sydney Red Gum across to this bank here over here. You have the, the tarp and hammock there. Obviously when you camp amongst gum trees, you've got to be careful you're not going to drop any widow makers on you during the middle of the night, uh, which they tend to do. So if I have a look at this gum, most of its branches are on the right hand side of the tree. There's not a whole lot of branches coming out from the left hand side. So I should be pretty sweet there. There's only one other tree of concern and that's this one over here. but 
So I've got one branch coming out and it's it's quite a distance away from where I'd be setting up camp, so it should be pretty sweet. Yeah, it'd be quite a nice spot um, camping amongst the gummy lilies and the grass trees. And then I've got the creek right next to me, so yeah, not a bad spot at all. So this plant right here would have to be one of the most useful plants you can come across in the Aussie bush. It's called a grass tree or a xanthoria and it has so many uses. I'll have to um, do a whole video alone just to dedicate just to this plant because there's so many things to talk about it. Um, but just to name a few. So this is um, the flower spike that it shoots up. Um, sort of after bushfires and at the right time of year. And so that comes just out of the top of the plant. And so when it first shoots up, it's this section up here is covered in little white tiny flowers and they're full of nectar and it's a really nice sweet nectar. It's probably one of the nicest nectars you, um, you'll find out here and it's one of my favourites. Um, also the seed, um, so after it flowers it turns into seed and I believe that if you roast them they're actually edible but I'm pretty sure, don't um, take my word for that, do some research but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, also inside the, spike, um, the flower stem itself you always get um, grubs boring into here so like you won't be able to see it from there, but there's all these little holes inside the flower spike and because grubs grow in there and then um, by the time you they'll come out and hatch as crickets and beetles and things like that. So it's a really good bit of bush tucker inside of these. Uh, but one of the probably the most important uses of this is um, it's actually really good for fiber, um, fiber friction methods. So doing the bow drill or the hand drill method because um, it's a, a nice soft sort of uh, timber so you can get a, an ember for it quite easily. Um, also these use, because this one's not the best example, but you can get them, they tend to grow really nice and straight and so the Aborigines would use these as um, yeah, spears and things like that. Um, some other uses for it, the, uh, the leaves, the green leaves in the centre of the, um, the tree, you can pull them out and you actually eat the, the base, like the white base of the leaf. Um, also in the trunk of the plant, after fire, or if it's been a, um, if, it, if a beetle or something has been attacking it, an insect has been attacking the plant, it'll exude um, like this resin, and that resin is extremely useful. Yeah, so this is the resin I'm talking about. Um, as you can see, it sort of oozes out of the trunk of the tree after it's been attacked by insect or by fire. Uh, but yeah, incredibly useful stuff. This. Uh, so as I was saying, you can melt it down in the fire and then combine it with ash and some dried kangaroo dung. Um, and then when it um, hardens, it forms like a really solid cement. So it's really good for binding things together or um, patching things up. Other uses for it are, um, yeah, it's used as like an incense. So it actually smells really nice. And uh, they used to also used to use it um, for like a shellac, for like a, a wood varnish. Um, obviously you find it uh, form around the trunk of the tree, but you also find it around the base of the tree because when it gets so big, the the resin will fall off and then collect around the base of the tree. So always have a look around there. But yeah, incredible useful stuff. This is a skirt that it gets. Um, and it's actually a good indicator to tell you when a bushfire has been through the area recently. Obviously this has been built up for quite a number of years. So there obviously hasn't been a fire through here for, for quite a while, but it's a good little indicator when this is all burned away, you know a fire's been through um, recently. But yeah, anyway, plenty of things to talk about this. I'll have to do another video dedicated to this alone, but. I um, wish you guys uh, yeah, know a little bit about it now. And this part of the bush is absolutely stunning. It's like a garden of like gummy lilies and grass trees and red gums. It's really beautiful. Oh man, it's so nice to be back out in the bush. It's been way too long. It's actually a really nice day today. Like we're in the middle of summer, but it's not too hot. The clouds have come over. It's just nice and tranquil. You've got the sound of the, uh, the rapids in the distance as well. Uh, it's just what the doctor ordered.
All right, well, I think I'm gonna go head back to the original spot um, next to the big water hole and that big rock cliff face. Um, just because around here, it's pretty hard to find a, a decent spot. Lots of rocks everywhere, and all the trees seem to be pretty annoyingly spaced apart. So, I might go back to the other spot because I think it'll be much easier to set camp there. All right, so back at the water hole area, um, just trying to find some suitable trees to set up. Once again, a little bit tricky. Just trying to find uh, ones that don't look like they're going to drop any branches. Some of them look a little bit sketchy, but just behind me I've got a stringy bark and a banksia that I think I'll be able to tie off between. Stringy bark, there are some branches over me, but I'm not too worried about them. They don't look like they're going to come down. They're quite small as well, so I should be alright. And the banksia I'm not too fussed about either. So I think that will do me. So let's um, get stuff out of the bag and get it set up. Uh, Alright, well change of plans I think. Um, I'm just getting absolutely hammered by bull ants over there. They're these like big red bull ants with massive um, pincers on them and when they bite their body hurt and I'm just getting overrun. Like as soon as I stop for more than a few seconds my boots get overrun. They're all over my bag. So it's just going to be a nightmare ever if I decide to stay there because I won't be able to sort of sit out on the ground and cook dinner or anything like that without getting eaten alive. So as frustrating as it is, even though I've sort of just went through all the effort of filming and um, setting up the hammock and stuff. I'm gonna have to pack it all down now and then move to a little bit of a high ground I found like up on um, top of a little bit of a ridge. It's a pretty nice I like, could be a pretty nice spot to set up camp get a nice view of the river and stuff So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do which is a uh, very frustrating But it's better than the alternative of um here being eaten alive. So I'll get that back down now All right, so this is where I'm thinking about setting up camp. Some nice sized trees, nicely spaced apart. And you get a really nice view. So looking down at the river and down the valley there, so it should be a really nice spot to wake up to in the morning. I am sort of on the edge of this little sort of rocky outcrop. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I actually think it might be quite nice to sit on top of the rocks, um, watch the sunset with a, a nice cold one. Yeah, it should be a nice spot. So we'll get everything set up now. Alright, well I've got a camp all set up now. I'm pretty happy with the day. I think it should um, do me pretty well for tonight. It was a little bit tricky trying to tie off the tarp because obviously being on rock, I um, can't really drive any pegs into the ground, but managed to get some fallen logs and sort of wedge them between some um, uh, rocks and just tie off to those. So uh, it should do me pretty well for tonight. It's a really nice spot. It's a very beautiful spot, especially to watch the sunset. So uh, pretty happy with it. But um, yeah, very dehydrated now. So I need to go down and fill up some water because I've been running around like a headless truck today. So sweaty as well. So I might go down for a bit of a wash, um, fill up some water, and then I'll come back up here and uh, take in the sunset.
It's looks like we've got some clouds moving in. Uh, there was a prediction for some rain tonight and possibly a storm. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't get too severe. I'm actually pretty happy with this spot, eh? All things considering, I think it uh, yeah, turned out quite well. Such a beautiful view. So yeah, maybe uh, there's a blessing in disguise, those ants being down there kind of forced me to come up here. Just fingers crossed if this storm does come through, uh, it doesn't rattle me around too much because I am a little bit exposed up here, but we'll see how we go. All right, well with this storm rolling in, I might uh, yeah, cook up dinner pretty quickly. I'm not gonna have a fire tonight. Um, even though this park that I'm in, uh, there is no fire ban, um, and we have had a hell of a lot of rain over the last week. It's just a bit of a sensitive topic at the moment. I don't really need to have a fire either. I brought my alcohol to stay with me um, tonight, so I can easily cook up on that. So I'm just not gonna have a fire. Let's play it safe. Um, yeah, so we'll get that out and get that going. Yeah, so I can hear a lot more thunder now and uh, see some lightning every now and then. So I thought there was a bit of lightning then. So. Yeah, might be in for a bit of a show tonight. Um, I was going to cook some dinner, but I might leave that for a bit because if it starts to get pretty severe, I don't want to be in the middle of cooking, so I'm just going to yeah, leave it for the moment and uh, see how this uh, blows over. All right, we'll have about a beer and some biltong to take in the storm. Man, there's so much lightning and thunder now. It's not raining just yet. Yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't get um, too severe because you definitely feel pretty vulnerable when you're out in the bush in a, in a lightning storm. Especially camping up on a bit of a ridge here. And so I don't know if you guys heard that thunder now. Oh, it's got a few drops of rain as well. And it's going to get pretty interesting. Whoa. Oh, I don't know if the camera would have picked that up, but there's the biggest fork lightning. Oh man, this is, this is a bit sketchy to be honest. That just absolutely turned it on. That was gorgeous. Funny how things turn out the way they do. Like I thought that storm was gonna come over and absolutely hammer me, but sort of skirted around me. Like there's still lots of lightning going off in the distance, but I know it started to rain and then um, the cloud managed to, so the sun managed to pop underneath the clouds and just light up the entire sky and all the water droplets and, oh man, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is why I love getting out here because times like this, you just, it's you and mother nature just doing her thing and you just get, you just get to witness it all. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the nicest uh, sunsets I think I've had in the bush for quite a while. You ripper, absolutely beautiful. All right, well, I don't think I'm gonna have dinner tonight. Um, it's just wet, it's getting late. I can't be bothered to cook to be honest, it's going to take me about half an hour to cook it and I really just can't be bothered, I'm pretty exhausted so I've got enough beer and a biltong and some nuts and a, a plum to get me through tonight so I'm going to crack this open, sit back, enjoy the beautiful view and um, I'll get back to you guys in the morning so see you then.
Good morning guys, I um, woke up to a beautiful morning this morning, it's such a lovely day. It's a very stark contrast to what it was like last night, but um, yeah, it didn't rain too much throughout the night, which is good, and uh, sleeping in the hammock was awesome. I really like sleeping in the hammock. Some people hate it, but I find if you find that sweet spot in the hammock, um, you get a pretty comfy night's sleep. And when it comes to sort of camping in this kind of sandstone country where it's pretty difficult to find some flat level ground that's not hasn't got shrubs in the way or isn't overrun by ants or anything like that. Um, having the hammock in the, in the kit, that way it just gets you off the ground um, and it opens up a lot more campsites because I wouldn't have been able to camp here last night with the inflatable mat because there's, there's just too many rocks around. So and it's a really beautiful spot. So I'm very glad that I brought the, the hammock with me. So I've got something pretty cool to show you guys. It's my brand new knife made by Mitch at Core Knife and Tool. It's a really beautiful knife. I'm so stoked with it. It's got some really nice weight to it and just the quality of it is absolutely gorgeous and the same goes with the leather work and the sheath it's just yeah second to none it's really beautiful i also got this little pouch here which he calls the swagman's pantry so i'll grab the camera and give you guys a bit of a closer look yeah so as you can see the quality of this is absolutely gorgeous the leather work is so nice if you take out the knife such a beautiful looking knife it's got some really nice weight to it it's made from o1 so four millimeter o1 tool steel and the scale is a repurposed Jarrah sleeper rails. And it's got a really nice contour to the handle as well, so it fits in the hand nice and snug. Really nice knife. Um, and also comes with a, a fire steel made out of the same material. And then, yeah, just a dangler sheath as well, so nice and handy when you want to keep this on the belt and be able to take off the, the sheath as you please. And then this thing, which is really cool, which he calls the Swagman's Pantry. So if I open this up, inside it's got all these little glass bottles which you can put your herbs or your spices or your salt and pepper um, or if you didn't want to use it as that you could just use it as your, your fire kit keep your flint and steel in there but it's just a really beautiful pouch to have so yeah really nice quality stuff um, definitely worth checking out Mitch at Core Knife and Tool if you're in the market for something like this he's just a young bloke from South Australia and he does some really nice work so definitely worth checking him out Alright guys, well that's another trip done and dusted. Really enjoyed this weekend. Um, it's been such a nice weekend to come back out in the bush. Um, a few things didn't quite go to plan, obviously having to move campsite because of those stupid ants and that sort of storm rolling through yesterday Arvo, um, kind of mucking up my dinner plans. But apart from that, it's been a really beautiful weekend. Like even watching as that storm went past, watching that sunset last night, that was really beautiful. So yeah, it's been a really nice weekend and I'm glad I managed to get out here because it's been way too long since I uh, did my last camp. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And um, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you're new to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, um, feel free to give us a uh, thumbs up and a subscribe. That'll really help me out. So anyway, until next time guys, hooroo.